parte veri i et spedite sancti. Amen. Uh, but then St. Anthony, uh, St. Anthony of the Desert, um, again, the, the f- father of Western monasticism. I mean, it had been going on uh, for, for, for hundreds of years, right? Men wanting to give their lives to Christ, uh, not with their blood, but with their toil, with, with their time, with everything they had, everything they give over to Christ. And um, uh, you know, St. Anthony was one of the first to do this by going out into the wilderness. And as we'll see, he, you know, he didn't know about Paul the Hermit. He would meet him later. Uh, but one of the very first to begin living in this manner of life. Um, He was um, born to wealthy parents, and this is about the year 251, and they died when he was was a young man, and uh, so we have this wealth, uh, great wealth, and he was in church, and he heard that uh, passage from the gospel, go sell what you have and give to the poor, right? That admonition of Christ to the the rich young man, and St. Anthony had this flash of insight, I'm the rich young man. And God is telling me to do this. So he did. He, he, from that, that very day, he got up. He made provisions for his sister, his one sister. He gave the rest of, of, of his wealth away, and he went to live um, outside the city. Uh, and this is, this is not too uncommon at the time. Ascetics, holy men, living kind of on the outskirts. And he found an old hermit to, um, you know, to kind of apprentice himself to. And he lived in this manner uh, for a few years, um, uh, 15 years, as a matter of fact. And then he went and decided that, um, you know, we say like our, our, we should not consider ourselves uh, uh, living in this earth, but passing through this earth, our true home is in heaven, our true life is in heaven. And St. Anthony, as a young man, about, about 30, maybe 35, decides that he's going to die to himself, he's going to die to this world as literally as possible. So he goes and lives in a sepulcher. He finds a grave and walls himself up in a tomb, and he's got a little hole in the wall, and then somebody comes and brings him some bread and water um, uh, every week. Uh, and he lives that way uh, for, um, I think, uh, quite some time, a year or so. I'm not uh, too sure on the timeline, but, uh, I mean, imagine that, living, living in the dark, living in a tomb on the bare ground. Um, incredible. So um, Satan tries to tempt him with all kinds of things, you know, the good he could have done in the world with his wealth, uh, boredom, um, impure temptations. He gets them all. Um, he doesn't succumb to any of them. And Satan is so furious that God permits um, uh, the devil to actually physically uh, beat St. Anthony. And so the next week when his, his friend came to bring his provisions, there was no answer. He thought he must have died. So they broke down the wall. They found St. Anthony. They took him to a church to recover. And he said, upon recovering, he addressed the devil. And he says, aha, behold, I am still here. Do all that you will to me. You will never separate me from Christ. So uh, quite the faith of St. Anthony there and the, and the determination. Well, he decides he's going to go further still into the wilderness. He finds an old fort and he walls himself up again. We're finding a pattern here, I guess. And he receives bread twice a year. Every, he gets a six-month supply of bread and that's what he lives on. Imagine how hard and stale that would be. Um, and people came to him for advice, which he gave through a hole in the wall. And he lived in that fort for 20 years, giving advice, receiving bread twice a year. Uh, his fame was spreading. And after that amount of time, so many others had come and uh, were living a similar way of life. They asked him to come out and found uh, monasteries for them. to give them a rule of life. Uh, so St. Anthony concedes, and, and nobody has seen him in 20 years. He's, he's been behind a wall uh, for two decades. And when he comes out, people are expecting him to be emaciated, uh, to be hollow, uh, to be somewhat like socially distant, as he would say these days. Uh, and he's affable, he's friendly, he, he looks healthy, um, nothing like what they expected. Uh, so quite the, um, I guess, maybe the testament to um, uh, God's grace, uh, but also uh, what a cheerful disposition can do for us even physically, right? We can undergo great hardships, great physical austerities, but when we do so with a cheerful heart, uh, uh, we, we benefit, our whole body benefits. So he comes out and he is um, uh, advising these monks, founding monasteries, and among his disciples would be uh, St. Macarius, who we've heard of recently, Macarius the Elder. Uh, he became a, a famous stylite. And the monks that began accumulating in these monasteries uh, remarked at how austere a life so many of them were living with all their fastings, their, their prayers, their all-night vigils. And Anthony said to them, said to them with uh, sadness, this is what kind of one of his famous uh, prophecies, there will come a time in the future when monks will live in cities and eat dainties at tables. 
Monks will not be able to fast one day as we do continually. And yet there will still be those who would have the spirit of true perfection, but they will have to be much stronger, for their virtue must survive amidst the contagion of bad example and luxury. Uh, quite the prophetic words from St. Anthony. And um, a young monk asked him why, why this would be so. Why would the monks of the future be so weak? And St. Anthony replied, It is easy for us to do these things because the devil is bound. But in these later times, men will have to fight Satan unchained. And that's not just the monks, that's all of us. The unbinding of Satan, which we have from other prophecies as well. Uh, the Fatima, for example. So, um, uh, quite the, the dire prophecy from St. Anthony, um, and that would, I would say, uh, maybe serve to give us some hope in that if we feel like things are hopeless or feel overwhelmed, um, you know, we have it from the saints. We are fighting Satan unchained, and that is not easy. Now, what does that mean? We excuse ourselves? No, we try harder. If we fight Satan unchained, then therefore we have to rely on God even more. I have recourse in prayer. Uh, so he, he continued doing this in Anthony, uh, founded several monasteries, and he again retired to a distant place. He, he, he wanted that solitude. And this is the proof. This is a great example of St. Anthony in that when he went to get away from people, uh, he, he tried to find the most remote location he could, and then he plants and cultivates a garden and is growing these little vegetables and food. Not that he himself would ever eat it. He didn't eat from that garden but he wanted to have something nice to give to visitors whom he knew would follow him. Now that's charity, right? Is it getting, wanting to get away from people, but knowing they're going to follow you, and instead of being angry at them, he, he makes, you know, builds a, a, grows a garden so he can be hospitable when they come, right? That is the combination of virtues that is, is a sign of true sanctity. Many, many people fancy themselves to be saints or ascetics or mystics as long as nobody else is around. Or if the people who are around are there when they want them, how they want them, and they say the right things. Oh, you're wonderful. Oh, you're so holy. Oh, you're a mystic. That's wonderful. Yeah, when people are around them, when they don't want them to be there, when I just wish you'd go away and leave me alone, and they're like, you know, some saint you are, right? That's when your true piety comes out, great or little. Uh, so it is, it is the combination of opposites. Those people who don't want to be around people, but they're still the friendliest and the most kind. Uh, on the contrary, right? You have those people who are very, are, are very kind and they're wonderful and they're generous. They don't mind people at all, but it's very, very far, hard for them to spend time in prayer, time alone with God. You have to be able to combine those opposites. And that's always the sign of, of, of true sanctity. So don't be fooled, right? Don't be fooled by one, one um, side of somebody. You, we, we need to look at the whole thing. That's why God is a just judge, because we, we can't see all these sides. And, you know, we wouldn't have the life of St. Anthony um, if it weren't for St. Athanasius, right? A bishop who heard about him and wrote the life of St. Anthony. And that helped to spread uh, not just devotion to him, but also the devo a devotion to the um, monastic way of life. Um, so that was, that was uh, much later, about 100 years later, Athanasius would write about St. Anthony. Um, but in the time of St. Anthony's life, uh, the emperor wrote to him. And the emperor wrote a letter to St. Anthony, and everybody was impressed. The emperor himself wrote to you. And Anthony's like, basically, pff, whatever. He wants something from me, right? Uh, he, and it was true. The emperor knew of the influence of St. Anthony, and he was hoping to get him on his side. And Anthony just TCs right through this. And, and again, that's, that's that proof of, of, of sanctity. Is, you, you know, a, a saint is not impressed by anybody except God. He's not impressed by anything except virtue. Uh, so Anthony lives in this manner. He finally dies in the year 356 at the age of 105. And to the end, he never relaxed his disciplines or austerities. And uh, the severity of his penances uh, were matched only by the warmth of his kindness and his charity. Uh, so that is um, the life of St. Anthony, uh, a great uh, uh, um, a saint in the church. And oftentimes, all we need is an example. And God gives us these men, and we, we should be careful. The church says um, the penances of, the, of these desert fathers, these ancient fathers, is given more for admiration than imitation, right? We can't live like this. We, we can't um, uh, do these hard penances, but we can imitate their love, their charity, and their balance in, in that life. Uh, uh, solitude, but also hospitality. Uh, so let's look for that in, in every area, every virtue. Uh, we need that balance. Uh, but let's ask God for, uh, um, for his grace, and let's pray to the saints for their intercession. God bless you all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.